We're back talking about whether Christians and Muslims worship the same God with Ergen Kanner, Hashem Hasabala, and Deborah Caldwell. Okay, let's go around and let's just get a one or two word answer to this initial question to see where everybody's at. Um, and I'll start with you, Deborah. Do Muslims and Christians worship the same God? I believe so, absolutely. Okay, Hashem, where are you at on this? Um, I would agree, absolutely. I think uh, Muslims and Christians worship just the very same God. Okay, and Ergen? Absolutely not. Okay, you have, we have a dissenter. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, Ergen, you are taking a contrary position to the other two. Why don't you begin and say why you think that uh, this is a different God? Well, I mean, it's not only my take, it's the take of evangelical Christianity in that uh, there is only one God, the triune, intimate, uh, transcendent God. Uh, just because somebody uses a term that is identical, or in the case of Islam, from which I came, uh, wants to use the same names or backgrounds, or perhaps even uh, forefathers, doesn't necessarily mean that they have taken the same uh, God and, and used his nature. And I will use you for instance, uh, in Islam, they deny the Father heart of God, they deny the deity of the Son, they deny the person of the Holy Spirit. Exactly what part of God are we agreeing upon? Um, we are not talking about God in the terminology here, again, because terminology is terminology. But we are talking about the nature of God. The God of the Bible is the God who saves, who is intimate, the God who is vicarious. Jesus is the God-man. Uh, we've got a question sent down to the table here uh, to Brother Shabir. What does the Bible say about the Christian concept of the Trinity? The word Trinity does not exist in the Bible anywhere. The word Trinity itself was coined after the Bible, long after the Bible was written uh, to express a developing concept. That is the concept that there are three persons who are each by himself God and yet together the three persons are just one God. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God but there, there is really only one God. Uh, the, the idea that there is only one God is well rooted in the Bible Bible. Uh, several passages in the Bible, both in the Old and in the New Testament, from the lips of Moses and on the lips of Jesus, uh, all of these passages continue to insist that there is only one God. But over time, it seems that after the Bible was written, there was a development uh, in, in that people began to uh, to say that Jesus is, is God in a way. And uh, that led eventually to the full proclamation that he is really God. And now you have to deal with the fact that you should only have one God, but you're calling the Father God, and now you're calling Jesus the Son of God, and thinking that he's really God, so you have to make them one. And then you have to say something about the Holy Spirit. So uh, councils were held uh, in early Christianity to decide these issues. First was the Council of Nicaea in the year 325, in which it was decided that Jesus is very God of very God. And then in, the, in a subsequent council in the year 381, Council of Constantinople, that is when they made a proclamation about the Holy Spirit so that we can eventually get the full doctrine of the Holy Trinity. But the Bible itself continues to insist that there is only one God. There are some passages of the Bible which some Christians would interpret as being in some way supportive of their belief in the Trinity, but these passages do not explicitly state the Trinity doctrine, and in fact they're far removed from saying anything like the Trinity doctrine. There was one verse of the Bible which would have been very close, not quite, but very close to saying that God is a trinity. That is uh, 1 John chapter 5 verse 7 in the King James Version of the Bible. It says that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. But that verse has been found to be a later insertion into the Bible. And for this reason, the verse has now been removed from many modern translations. So if you look at the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, the uh, New American Bible, uh, the New Jerusalem Bible, New International Version of the Bible, you will find that in all of these versions, this passage, the First John chapter 5 verse 7, has been removed. Uh, in some Bibles, they have kept the number 7, but they have split a verse, another verse to fill up that space. Otherwise, you'd have an empty space there. One would look and see that number 7, oh, there's nothing in that space. So now, uh, another verse has been split to fill up this space, but the words which used to be in 1 John chapter 5 verse 7, the words that say that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, those words have been removed from the modern translations.